All right, it's Ron Goff, fighthight.com. I'm here with my man, Mr. Transformer himself, Troy Isley. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Till it, till it, till it, man. You know, got some, got some good rounds in the day. You know, uh, got, got a few more weeks, but you know what I'm saying? We already looking sharp, and you know, March 2nd is going to be crazy. You know, um, I didn't get a chance to talk to you like on camera after your last fight, but um, great win against. I kind of wanted to call him like kind of either like a prospect killer because that's what he was doing. He was just beating top guys and even beating former world champions like J Rock. Mm -hmm. um, just just revisiting first. Yeah. What was your whole entire thought on that fight? Because I so, thought that was great. You know, going into the fight, uh, I felt like I needed a test. Uh, I wanted I wanted that fight. You know. To, uh, you know, show people that that uh, that I feel. You know, so going into the fight, I wanted that fight. Uh, a lot of people slept on me, uh, thought I was going to lose. He was a prospect killer, so a lot of people thought I was going to lose and stuff like that. But that's the fight I wanted. I wanted a fight like that to show the world that the transform is here. But uh, you know, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. But uh, I thought I showed some some skills that you know that, that I haven't showed yet in my pro career. You know, a lot of people just thought I was a pressure fighter that goes forward and loads up all the time. You feel me? But I thought I showed, you know, I can box if I want to box. I can, you know what I'm saying? I got good defense. I can counter, you know what I'm saying? I can fight on the ropes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I have great body shots. And, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm just overall a technician. But, uh, you know, the people don't give me don't give me my credit because I'm not allowed to boast just about it. But, uh, hey, I don't care. I'm going to get there regardless. You know, when that fight was originally made, you know, not saying that I was picking you to lose, but there was like a kind of a moment of nerves like, yo, dang, that's a... That's a good fight, especially coming off the Chuck Simpson one that he had. So yeah. um, that was um, your first camp with Brian McIntyre too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, just how has that experience been um, with, you know, what they say 2023 trainer of the year? You're part yeah. of that reason of why he won so many awards that year. So um, yeah. what's the camp's been like with Bomac? It's been great. It's been great. And honestly, I already knew Bomac before, so it wasn't like we had to go go fill each other out. Cause you know, going into a big fight like that, you don't want to be going into something new. Going into a big fight like that. So uh, me and Bomac already, you know, said we already knew each other. It was just you know one call, and uh, things have been great. Uh, they've been you know changing up. You know, what I'm saying how I how I fight and stuff like that. So uh, it's, it's cool. It's been it's been a uh, it's been a, um, a smooth transition. I say that. I say that. So yeah. I feel like I'm a new me. Uh, ever since I've been there, I've been better mentally. So uh, I've been, I've been, I've been an overall better fighter. I feel like since I've been with BNB. You know, I, I, I talked to Keyshawn in an interview and brought you up, and the fact that not just the fact that you guys are good friends, but you know, Virginia together, you guys are now in camp. Mm -hmm. I know you, he's always been supportive of you, but now you guys can actually be in the same camp, be mm -hmm. truly supportive. And um, what's that like being with uh, Keyshawn as well? Man, that's that's great. That's great. Uh, you know, me and me and Keyshawn go way back uh, from my very first fight. Uh, I fought one of his teammates. Uh, so me and Keyshawn are like this, bro. That's my brother. You know, that's my Olympic teammate. So, you know what I'm saying? We've been in this together. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, we always set goals. And, you know, hey, we're going to get on the team. Then we're going to sign with top rank. So, you know what I'm saying? We're doing everything that me and him talked about growing up as kids. So the fact that it's happening now is, you know what I'm saying, is, is great. But uh, that's my brother, and you know what I'm saying, just him being here, that voice, you know what I'm saying, helps. There's just a little extra motivation for me. And I, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna do the same for him. You know, um, you got a fight that was just recently announced. Um, it's gonna be out in Verona, New York on March 2nd. It's, it's stacked yeah. with a lot of talent. As always, you're always on stacked, talented cards. Um, do you know your opponent, and, and do you know um, a little bit about him? What, and, uh, so I mean, I got I got the uh, Madman Marcos Hernandez. Uh, he's a he's a he's a good fighter. Um, he's a good you know good good step up fighter, and you know he's been in there with some world champs. So you know I'm definitely not sleeping on him, but uh, you know what I'm saying I feel like uh, he's not on my level. So um, I, feel, I feel like I feel like I'm I'm, I'm overall a better boxer, skillful, and uh, I think you know it's going to be easy work March second. You know. Obviously, you gotta stay focused on your opponent, but yeah. you know, obviously, world champions is gonna be a goal, and, and certain marketable names. Yeah. Um, I think I don't know. I might have heard somewhere. I'm not 100, percent but maybe like a Shane Mosley Jr. might be something that For might sure. intrigue you. Definitely, I definitely want. I want. I want Shane Mosley Jr. Uh, I think that'll be a good fight, and 
I think, you know what I'm saying, I think he needs to put that uh, that WBO title on the line against a real opponent and stop fighting some bums over there at Golden Boy. I think it's time to come over here and fight somebody for real. And then at the same time, uh, I think it's time for Law to get that WBA, WBA up. He's over there babysitting it, so I think it's time for that. And then, you know what I'm saying, Charlo's a hell of a fighter too, but he's slowing the division up. So mm -hmm. the reason the whole middleweight division is quiet and don't get talked about because him. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to fight middleweight or are you going to move up to fight 68? Like, what are you going to do, bro? Just move up and get a belt up, vacate it. Mm -hmm. But do something. Does, um, cause you know, Shane Mosley Jr. would be uh, kind of like a promotional battle, and obviously yeah. Charlo. I'm hearing rumors, I not. Like, I feel like uh, Golden Boy and Top Rank could do business. Yeah. Uh, it ain't like it's PBC. Well, PBC and Top Rank is maybe a promotional battle, but Golden Boy and Top Rank could, could do it. Do you um do you have any interest of maybe like a Genebec fight or is it just uh, yeah. a Lara? Uh, those I mean, guys a Genebec. I, I would I would love a Genebec fight, but uh. I feel like I feel I feel like I feel like I gotta develop a little bit more before I go for a Genebec. Do you feel like Genebec is the best in the division out of respect? Like sure, for sure. That's right why now, I said that. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And uh, I think Genebec is a legacy fight for me. Yeah. Yeah, I like Genebec later on down the line as a legacy fight for me. But for sure, I definitely want Genebec because I feel like Je Je Genebec will be like a me, or like a war co -lib. I feel Ooh. like. I like Genevieve, though. Okay, like he's the Triple G, the Kovalev, the, yeah. the, 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 okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think about his the last couple performances? I know he had like a, a kind of a Denzel Bentley kind of lackluster yeah. fight, but then had a unification and made it look pretty one-sided. Uh, you think he's, he's, he's probably the... I think, I, think, I think he's the man to be right now in the middleweight division. Uh, the Denzel Bentley fight. Denzel's, a, I mean, he's, he's an okay fighter. He's not trash. He's been in there with some world champs. So, I mean, I ain't going to say um, he looked lackluster. Uh, I mean, he probably, he wasn't used to fighting those rounds. So, you know, mm -hmm. Denzel took him later on. He's used to knocking people out so early. So, Denzel took him a little bit of rounds. But, I mean, I feel like the last guy he fought, like, uh, for the for the, for the the unification fight, I mean, I feel like I could beat him. Yeah. You feel me? If they gave me that, that shot, I feel like I could, I could beat him. He was like a placeholder, yeah, essentially. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, he was like a placeholder. That guy wasn't a real champ. I feel like I could beat him now. You know, um, the, the transition from amateurs to your professional and even, like, different camps, um, been tremendous like we can yeah. see visibly where your ups and downs might have been while you're learning but yeah. at this point um, when you when you look at the pros what have you kind of learned from this point that's going to get you to a position where I'm ready for that world champion is it going to be sparring top guys like Terrence Crawford that yeah. you in, in, in um, or is it just taking on these tougher opponents professionally I feel like I feel like uh, taking on taking on people that fought for the title like tough veterans that'll get you there. Um, I, f I feel like that'll get you there as well as uh, training with people like Terrence Crawford, having them, I, you know what I'm saying, telling you what you need to work on and stuff like that. You know, um, I feel like that'll get you there. But also, I mean, you, you got to fight some uh, some tough competition to get to the, before you get to the title on the development stage. So, you know, so when you start, when you start fighting people equally on your level, you know what I'm saying, you start to get some resistance, mm -hmm. you, you don't like, oh, it's, it's not something new to you. You know what I'm saying? So. I think, you know, top rank developed me real well, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get any ducks, you feel me? Um, so I feel like I've been fighting people that, that that's there, that's been giving me a little bit of resistance. So I, that's why I kind of feel like my mental is a lot different from the other prospects growing up. Mm -hmm. Coming up, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I've been fighting uh, tough companies. Yeah, their record probably ain't, ain't good, but the people that I've been in there were like, you know, Victor Tony, he fought, you know, Fundora. Um, you know, my last opponent, uh, he's been in there with uh, J-Rock. He's been there with Angulo. He's been there with World Champs. You know, my, my, my next opponent, been there with Darrell. Been there with Rosario. So, you know what I'm saying? He's been there with the top guys. So I think, you know what I'm saying, my development, I feel like uh, it's great. And, you know what I'm saying, it's going to get me ready for the world titles for sure. You know, I couldn't help but, like, in the in the gym, Bo Max on your ass, Rez on your ass, yeah. Esau. He's a nice guy on your ass, you know, um, but I know I couldn't help but Terrence is constantly all around you, buzzing all around you like, do this, do that, why are you taking a break? Why? Um, um, what is it like just, you know, you got trainer of the year, you know, many people feel pound for pound fighters in your camp, you know, you're, you're in with um, guys that they put in like prospect of years, you know, Olympian background of yours, um, what's it like having Terrence constantly on you and and just what's the like even maybe respond with it, it, it mean it means that i'm that i'm 
I'm not gonna say that I'm the real deal, but it, it means that I'm that I'm that I'm a that I have that that I have what it takes to be a great fighter, and not that I have what it takes to be one of those pound for pound future future fighters. If I keep you know what I'm saying keep working and do everything right and stay on the path, you know what I'm saying. That's that's what that means, you know what I'm saying. I have you know trainer of the year and you know what I'm saying fighter of the year, number one pound for pound fighter on me, you know, telling me, you know, this is what I need to do, this is what you need to do, stuff like that. So that, that just means, you know, I'm on the right path. I just got to, you know, stick with it and, you know what I'm saying, keep doing the right things. When you, um, when you get a chance to spar Terrence, like, is he meaner outside of the ring, y'all, or is he meaner inside the ring? With the... Mm, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, um, he definitely, definitely, uh, he definitely going to test you, uh, outside of the ring, you know what I'm saying? He gonna test this outside of the ring, but at, at the same time, I mean, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. He, he's, he's meaning both to me. But I mean, he, I got his respect, I would say so. So I mean, he, he's, he's cool with me. You know, you've also, I believe, gotten a ring with Jerron Ennis, who's, yeah, yeah. yes, he's a welterweight, but he could probably be like, yeah. <laughs> like a middleweight, essentially. So yeah, I think the, the sparring pairing makes sense. Yeah. What What was that like to um, also spar what they feel is potentially one of the top guys in the future? It was great. It was great. And uh, definitely, definitely, um, it, was, it, was, it was definitely great to, you know, get the rounds there with Ennis. And, uh, you know, that's those those are my boys up there, too. I rock with, uh, with Bozy and I rock with, uh, with Boots. Yeah, so, you know, those are good people up there, too. But it was definitely, uh, it was definitely good to, you know, get that experience and definitely see what the Boots were like. You know, um, I don't, I don't think this fight will ever happen. So this is more like a fantasy, kind of like a, like how Floyd and Thurman ever got to fight each other. Yeah. But I'm just can help, ha uh, help to ask without predicting a winner. But I mean, if those two guys happen to share the ring, hey, I'm, <laughs> both of them are boys, so I'll be tuned in. I definitely will. Would that, without even going into it, potentially be one of the best? Fights ever to be made in boxing, if it ever happened. It definitely, it definitely, definitely, it, it's a, it's a, it's a money maker for sure, and it's definitely a fight uh, that, that the fans want to see. Um, seeing that you've also sparred those guys, who else have you had an opportunity to work with and, and kind of get in the ring with? Uh, I've had a chance to work with Ram, Jesus Ramos. Uh, I helped him out with Joey Spence fight. He's a beast. Mm. Um, that was like one of his best performances too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely, I got him ready for that for that camp. So you know, we got in some some hell of a spar. Uh, it was some intense rounds, like. The rounds were so intense that uh, the fifth coach was like, shit, I may got to stop these guys from sparring each other. We yeah. Like, damn, yeah, dude, this is intense. Yeah, we sparred each other damn near February all the way to the damn near uh, to March. So that was a... So you got a sim ready for Joey and... And then uh, I, sparred, uh, I sparred Laura a few times. Laura oh, a few times. okay. Yeah, I sparred him maybe maybe three times, three, four times. Uh, Laura, I worked with uh, Swift Jared Hurd back when I was an amateur, when he was on top. Uh, yeah, that's when he was a wrecking ball. Yeah. Yeah, I was helping him out. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I I got some some pretty good rounds in with some world champs, and I like to work with the world champs because hey, that lets me know where I'm at. So mm -hmm. you feel me? Hey, if I see a world champion, then, hey, you feel me? Why not? Why not get some rounds in with them? Let you know where you at. Shit. You feel me? Let you know if you got to work on. Let you know if you're on that level yet. You feel me? So mm -hmm. that's that's why. Seeing the fact that you spar Laura now, in this case, yes, you want to fight Laura, and I know yeah. Laura has a fight with um, uh, Zarafa. Do you, do you just pick Laura safe just because the fact is Laura, or do you feel that maybe he's getting a little bit older and the fight might be a little bit more tougher? I like Laura. I ain't gonna disrespect him like that. I feel like uh, I feel like he's uh, he's still a good boxer. I feel like uh, he could he could. I feel like he's gonna beat uh, Zarafa. I feel like he has uh, he still got some you know some 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 sneaky little traps and. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like he's going to win that fight. You know, on that same card, there's a lot of interesting matchups. I mean, did you see the announcements? Were you surprised on, uh, like, the Pitbull versus Roley? Uh, I obviously see Roley versus Ryan, but, yeah. I mean, a Pitbull, he's going he gonna to bring the fight, but I don't know. That's an interesting fight. I ain't going to – that's a very interesting fight. I would rather see uh, <laughs> Ryan and Roley, but – that's an interesting fight. I want to see how Roley gonna handle Pitbull Press. Had the way, cause uh, if he if he has the, the the same, he don't have the same power as Broso, but he got some power. So we'll see how Roley handles it. I mean, many people say Roley's right. awkward, right? Yeah, he's so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would like a smaller guy fight 
You it would have to go inside, I'm assuming. Yeah. But yeah. how do you fight awkward fighters like a like a rolling? Do you just work on the timing or do you I would just me, I would have to be in there with him to, to answer that question. Mm -hmm. But Pitbull, there's nothing. Pitbull, all he knows is going straight forward, so I'm pretty sure he's just, he's gonna. It's just gonna be an action pack. You know, you're, you don't see Pitbull boxing. Come on now. He's, <laughs> he's a Pitbull. He's gonna yeah. go. So, yeah. But I, it's interesting for sure. I, I wanna see it. What do you think about the the main event? Because it caught a lot of people off guard that Keith Thurman was coming off the long way up. It's coming up in weight, yeah. facing. A strong pressure, active yeah, fighter like Tim. Like, I feel like he should have took a tune up. Mm. Yeah, I feel like he should have took a tune up, but uh, I don't think it's gonna go how people think it's gonna go. I think Tim is gonna wash him. And, and let's just say Thurman was very active, right? Would that yeah, yeah. change things, or would you still kind of see Tim? I would, still, I would still see Tim beating him, but it, mm -hmm. it would just—it probably would take a little bit more work because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Thurman's—he's uh, been in the world with he's a veteran, but. I feel like Tim's gonna go to his body and he's gonna put the mental pressure on him. He's gonna break him. You know, he's one weight class below where you're at. I mean, this is obviously a future fight, like yeah, you said. For like sure, these, for sure. I mean, could we maybe see like definitely, Troy definitely, and Tim? Definitely, 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 for sure. Unification. Hey, I'm at 60. He's at 54. So he definitely later on down the line for sure. Tim Zoo and me for sure, definitely. Uh, and as well as uh, you know, later on down the line, you know, Ramos and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, I feel like I feel like. Uh, Cholo too, but the uh, the one that just saw Canelo, I feel like uh, he might be coming up right yeah. when right when my time, right when I reign as king. I feel like uh, I see a you know a big fight with uh, the smaller Cholo later on down the line too. You know, um, my dad's big on Cholo, so he my dad likes the smaller Cholo. So mm -hmm. that's always been a guy like oh my god, you like him so much, you like him so much. So I'm gonna fight that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna fight that. Yeah, I'm gonna fight him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, out of all the names, Tim made you smile, and I think Charlo made you smile too. Yeah. So, is those realistically like out of yeah. all the fights, those would be the two that would probably make you smile the most? If they, if you had an opportunity to pick, you would want those guys. For sure, for sure, yeah. Those are those are big money fights right there, and then, you know, as well as those those are legacy fights that test my skills. So, for sure, uh, I'm not in the business just to you know. I'm in the business, of course, to make money, but I also want to, I want some legacy shit too as well, you know what I'm saying? I want them to say Troy Isley was great. I want to be a Hall of Famer, so I want them to not be able to talk about the sport without the years I was in it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, yeah. Of course, um, before I let you go and remind everyone on March 2nd, um, it's coming back to 2024 to whoop some ass out in yes. Verona, New York. Um, what do you want to let the fans know um, on just last message and where can they find you on social media? Uh, well, definitely tune in to uh, March 2nd, Run New York. Uh, it's going to be a great show, and uh, you definitely don't want to miss it. It's going to be a new a new Transformer, and uh, definitely, definitely one you don't want to miss. But uh, if, you, if you're looking to find me, uh, social media, Instagram, Megatroy1, Twitter, GoTransformer, and Facebook, Troy Osley. Awesome. Appreciate it.